So today's topic is 5.2, probability using counting methods, and that's on pages 313 to 324 in your text. Our curriculum outcome is to extend understanding of odds and probability. Our lesson objectives today is to recall the ways that you can answer counting method type of problems and to use the counting methods to help find probabilities. So remember from previous courses, and maybe from some common sense, the probability of an event A occurring is so we, we say P of A, or the probability of event A occurring, is the number of favorable outcomes over the number of total possible outcomes. Today you'll need to remember the counting principles that we learned last unit, and that would be like the fundamental counting principle, that would be filling in the blanks, which works for most permutation type questions, but not all. Um, permutations, so that's a, something that's in a specific arrangement, and that's when we could use our NPR button. Or we could use the factorial version, remember that we have factorial as well. Permutations with identical objects, remember that we had n factorial over r factorial times s factorial times t factorial, etc., 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 where n was your total number of objects, and however many times those things were repeated or identical, you'd fill those in for r, s, and t. Combinations, and that's when the order doesn't matter, so things like card hands or just choosing people to be on committees, and that's what, using the NCR button. And also remember that you can have things like cases, and that's where situation, situation, sorry, where you can add your answers together. And some of the key phrases there are at least, and today I'll show you another way to do questions where they say at least. So here's our example. It says there are 11 boys in a cross country race. What is the probability that three out of five best friends, Blake, Jesse, Mark, Michael, and Terry, will finish in the top three? So we wanna find our total number of outcomes first. Usually that's the easiest thing. And we're talking about 11 boys in a race, and we are only in the top three, that means there can only be three of them in that top three. So we're gonna find a number of permutations that you could have three different boys in the top three um, out of 11 total boys. And then our favorable outcome in this case would then be, we want three out of these top, three out of these five boys to be in the top. So that would be five P3. So out of five boys, three of those. And so your probability then would be five P3 over 11 P3. And that would be 5p3 in your calculator is 60, 11p3 is 990. And that simplifies to 2 over 33. So you could write your probability as a fraction, or if you want to change that into a percentage, 6.1%. So here's our second example. It says, what is the probability that when Glennis has five kids, that at least one of them will be a girl? So if you want the probability of at least one being a girl, then you need to find the probability of them all being a boy. Because if you can find the probability of them all being a boy, that means if you subtract that from one, one being 100%, if you want to think of it that way, um, then one minus the probability of them all being boys will be the probability that at least one of them will be a girl. So the probability that they're all gonna be boys, well, if she has five kids, that's two times two times two times two times two. So that's 32 total outcomes. And the probability that they're all going to be boys, there'd be only one outcome if they're all boys out of 32 possible different outcomes. And one is the same thing as 32 over 32 minus one over 32. And that's 31 over 32, which is 97% chance that Glennis, when she has five kids, at least one of them will be a girl. So another example says, what is the probability that if Emily, Madison, Kristen, Delaney, Tamara, Jesse, and Sarah all sit in the front row at grad, that Jesse and Kristen will sit beside each other with Emily sitting in the first chair? So it seems like it's pretty complicated. So the first thing we wanna do is just find out how many different ways can these seven girls sit in the front row? And that would just be seven factorial. So that's your total number of outcomes. Now we have to get specific with where they're gonna sit. So I always like to just fill in the blanks for this type of question. So we know that Emily's sitting in the first chair. She can't go anywhere else, she's sitting in the first chair. So we actually only have six other blanks to fill. Now Jesse and Kristen are gonna sit beside each other. So we're, if we say that Jesse or Kristen are gonna sit in these first two chairs, that means Jesse or Kristen could sit in the first chair. And then that means Kristen or Jesse will be sitting in the next chair. And then we have four, three, two, one to fill in the rest of the chairs. Now we can't always just assume that Kristen and Jesse are gonna sit in these two chairs. They could also sit in these two chairs, or these two chairs, or these two chairs, or those two chairs. So what in the end, we're gonna multiply this whole thing by five. And when we do that, we get 240. So our probability of this event occurring is 240 over seven factorial, and 240 
divided by 50, 40, that's what seven factorial is, is one over 21, which is 5%. So the 5% chance that uh, when Emily, Madison, Kristen, Delaney, Tamara, Jesse, and Sarah all sit in the front row of grad, that they'll be in the specific situation where Emily sitting in the first chair and Jesse and Kristen are sitting side by side. And our final example says, what is the probability that you'll be, get dealt a five card hand full of spades out of a normal deck of 52 cards? So our total number of outcomes always goes on the bottom. And so we're getting five cards out of total 52 cards. So that's 52 C5. Now when we're dealing with cards, the order that the cards are in your hand doesn't matter. That's why we're using combinations. And our favorable outcomes would be five cards that are all spades. So that would then be 13 C5. Five out of the possible 13 spades in the deck. And when that's all said and done, we get 1287 over 2598960. So that's 2,598,960. And you get a 0.05% chance that you're gonna be dealt a card full of spades, or sorry, a handful of spades, five cards in a row, that are spades out of a normal deck of 52 cards. So in summary, you need to remember all of our counting principles in order to find probabilities. And you need to remember that the probability of an event occurring is the number of favorable outcomes over the number of total possible outcomes. I guess likewise, an event, the probability that an event is not occurring will be one minus the prob uh, probability that the event is occurring. So if we said there's a 20% chance of rain, that means that there's an 80% chance that there's not gonna be rain. And that's just one minus whatever your actual probability is. This concept is also very important in probabilities. So your assignment is on pages 321 to 323 today. Uh, good luck and we'll see you in class.